Welcome to High Five Fitness Episode 9. I'm Dennett, the host and producer of the show. So far, our show has been about exercise, but even more important than exercise is what you eat. I'm very pleased to have Nate Miyake joining us for this show. Nate is a competitive physique athlete and coach. He has a private personal training and nutritional consulting practice based out of San Francisco, California. He is a certified personal trainer, a certified specialist in sports nutrition, and a certified specialist in fitness nutrition. He has a degree from the University of California at Berkeley, a post-bachelorette studies in kinesiology from San Francisco State University. He is a contributing writer to T Nation, Livestrong, Bodybuilding.com, and Muscle Mania. In 2009, he took first place in Phantom Weight, Muscle <coughs> Mania, American, and World Bodybuilding Championships. In 2004, he took first place in Lightweight, NPC, Max Muscle, Natural Bodybuilding Championships. He was voted one of the 24 fittest college students in the country from Muscle and Fitness in 2004. For 10 plus years, he's been running a private personal training and nutritional consulting practice. He's also a former professional wrestler and stunt acrobatic instructor, and he was profiled in Men's Health Magazine in September of 2011. He's written a number of books, including The Samurai Diet, The Fat Loss Consultant, Functional Fat Loss Plans for Busy Professional, and The Intermittent Feast, an evolutionary scientific approach to slashing fat. Welcome to our show, Nate. That's <laughs> quite a list of accomplishments well, you have there. Thank you. Uh, you just made me feel a lot cooler and more important than I actually am, but <laughs> nonetheless, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having well, me. Well, I think you're quite cool, <laughs> and I'm really glad to have you on the show. I'm glad to be here. So before we get started, I want to sure. tell you, I was on a flight to Hawaii, and I read your book, The Samurai Diet. I thought it was a wonderful book. After reading your Great. book, I applied the practices, and I've got leaner than I've ever been before. There's a picture of me in Hawaii after I read your book showing just how lean I got. That's the goal, man. We all, all got to look good. Your practice, <laughs> the things you write about work. Now, right. a lot of people get really confused, and it's uh, easy to understand. If I go and eat, if I eat some junk food or go on a binge and go the next day to the gym and burn off those calories, I'm net even, right? So, for example, if I, if I have an ice cream Sunday dessert and I take in 1,000 calories mm -hmm. at night, now the next morning I wake up and I'm back at it, hitting an intense boot camp, and I actually have a heart rate monitor. I've hit 1,000 calories, so I'm net even, right? Well, that's, that's, not, that's, not, uh, that's not necessarily the case, and uh, I think that's where people, people fall into some traps and they think, oh, the, if, I just, uh, if I just work off all these extra calories I'm eating, uh, I'm going to be in great shape. But you, you see that all the times in the gyms. You see people who are there six, six days a week. Uh, they're there consistently and religiously, yet their bodies never change. It's because they're not changing their diet. And diet is so much more important for achieving those body composition results uh, than, than exercise. Um, hmm. But uh, that is sort of the anecdotal. And you'll see NS, uh, NFL offensive linemen who do these crazy, uh, obviously very athletic, they're, they're, they're great athletes and they're doing intense training programs, but a lot of them are obese. So uh, it's not exercise alone, and, and, and what I always say is you can't out-train a poor diet. So from a technical perspective, though, it's not just calories in, calories out. It's uh, the metabolic and hormonal effects of the foods that we eat and our training programs. So uh, let's say we have that 1,000 calories. We, we're trying to starve Tastes ourselves good. at night, right? But uh, uh, then we just get that craving for ice cream when we have those a thousand calories right before to, we go yeah. to bed. Well, what happens uh, hormonally is that you have elevated insulin, you have elevated fatty acids in the blood, and that basically inhibits your body's natural release of growth hormone, which happens in the first couple hours of sleep. Growth hormone is our most potent fat burning hormone in the body. So you're basically you're, you're inhibiting your body's natural mechanism for burning fat while you sleep. Then you go and you go on the a treadmill maybe for two hours to to offset the next day because you uh, to offset that the next day because you feel guilty. Right. What happens now hormonally? Well, after two hours, cortisol is elevated. Uh, you're actually inhib inhibiting your body's testosterone production. Uh, so uh, you can see that 
calories in, calories out are equal, but hormonally what's happened is we've inhibited growth hormone, uh, we've inhibited testosterone, and we've ele elevated cortisol, which causes uh, muscle loss, fat retention, things like that. Uh, although the calories in, calories out are equal, you can see that the hormonal and metabolic effects of your food and training program, they, they're, they're not equal. You've actually gained fat, lost muscle, that type of so thing. So more important than calories in and calories out or what kind of calories you're taking in? It's, it's both. I mean, calories still do count, but then that's why you also have to look at optimizing food choices as I think is the number one step yeah. in, 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 the, in the nutritional hierarchy. If you're, if you're making poor food choices, uh, you're, you're, you're not setting yourself up to succeed. Well, let's dive right into that. So what sure. are the optimal food choices? What do you recommend people to eat? Sure. Well, it, it, that really depends on uh, the person, and it depends on what they're doing activity-wise. But I really like simple templates as uh, educational tools yeah. uh, for people because we, there's so much information out there. There's so much confusion. There's actually a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of uh, nutritional standards that are set by uh, sort of governing bodies that are influenced by the refined food industries, things like that. So what I like to do is simplify it for people. And one of the simplest templates I like to teach people is, is the paleo diet, or yeah. uh, people might not know what that is, but it's, it's basically a caveman approach to nutrition. So it's getting away from modern uh, refined foods and getting back to more natural foods. And people can think about, well, you know, if it was around 10,000 years ago, uh, it's probably good for us. If, it's, uh, yeah. if it just came into existence about 10 years ago, it's probably not great. So it's an easy template for people to follow which is caveman food, so lean proteins, vegetables, whole fruits, nuts, things like that, and moving away from Pop-Tarts and Ding-Dongs. So and eggs, are in, like that. eggs are in. Eggs would be in. Eggs would be in. Meat, so, fish. Yes, that's veg right. Vegetables of all sorts. Right. And then I make some modifications for, that's why I say it depends on what you do activity-wise. Yeah. So that's a great approach. That's a great baseline approach for a sedentary person who's not really working out that much to just mm -hmm. stick to those caveman foods you'll do great and without counting calories or or thinking much more about it uh, it's a simple approach for an athlete it's a little different because uh, exercises changes changes your body's internal physiology things like that so um, it's it's quite a stress on the body so uh, you're burning through a lot of muscle energy reserves um, you're damaging muscle tissue so the athletes needs are are quite different than the yeah. sedentary person's that's when I look at another template. Another template I use is the uh, traditional village Japanese diet, uh, which is, you well, know. Well, that wasn't paleo, now, was that it? That wasn't paleo, but again, you know, strength training for an hour to, to build cosmetically pleasing muscle and look good at the beach is not necessarily a caveman activity either. So what we do is we add back in some, certain starch foods to support that anaerobic training. Rice? So uh, I, I would add uh, what are called starchy tubers. I know it's kind of geeky, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, so potatoes, sweet potatoes, uh, things of that nature, yeah. and then and then yes, rice is one of those foods that uh, is is not that problematic for people, uh, and it's a good starch source to support anaerobic training. So the sedentary person would follow more caveman diet. Yeah. The the active athlete would start reintroducing some starch foods to support their training. Now, you, when you add the starch food it's in, obviously you're not on a low carbohydrate diet. That's and you correct. You had some real interesting philosophies on that, which basically ditch the common thought that you should have a big breakfast with, with your carbs. You're saying you should get some carbs at night. That's correct. So um, what I still like to do is, uh, is play with carbohydrate intake to optimize the body's ability to burn fat, yeah. uh, to prevent uh, what's called rebound hypoglycemia, where someone will eat a starch or a sugary food, their blood sugar will go up, they'll get a bunch of energy, but then they'll crash and they'll want to sleep. This happens, you, you'll, you'll find at lunch, someone eats a big sandwich of potato chips and they're ready to fall asleep three hours yeah, later. I, so, so a lot of it is I work, with, I, I work with athletes, but I work with a lot of busy professionals who have highly cognitively demanding jobs. They can't be sleeping mm -hmm. at their desk at 3 p.m. So what I've done with the diet plan is I do add back in carbohydrates for the athlete, but I place them all at night. When you can actually sit and relax and enjoy your meal and digest your food, uh, that way during the day you're still spending a good time optimizing the body's ability to burn fat, and you're, and you're getting that nice even blood sugar where it's not all over the place. You get good energy, you got good function, uh, and then you can uh, eat your big starch-loaded dinner, and you're just going to go to sleep anyways, and you can sleep it off and start the day. That's uh, quite uh, different than conventional thought. Now, it is. is that only for someone that's in a calorie deficit? 
someone uh, that's working out a lot or well no that would be that's kind of my baseline uh in terms of uh once you set up food choices eating structure is about making a plan sustainable yeah and it's also that style of eating uh tends to make the plan a lot more sustainable pe for people because again it goes back to evolution we're, mm -hmm. we're hunter gatherers we're meant to be active during the day hunting not eating a ton catching our prey going home and having a feast i know that's kind of cheesy with the whole hunt and feast yeah. caveman thing but it's an easy uh, again it's an easy educational template for people to say oh well maybe that makes sense uh maybe i don't need to eat the six small meals and and starve at night we're, we we evolved as hunter gatherers so we're meant to eat that big meal at night and when i find when i switch clients to that their adherence to the diet goes up, their, their, and, which means their success rates goes up because now we're working with our instincts. And uh, now this is both for training athletes as well as pe average office workers who aren't yeah, working out that much? Correct. So, so, the, uh, so the athlete would eat a very, a, a very large portion of starch, you know, yes. you know, of course calculated based on their training demands and things like that and their goals. Um, the sedentary person would would maybe still emphasize more uh, less of the starch foods and more of the caveman meats, vegetables, maybe some whole food fats like nuts, avocado. Yeah. But they would still eat uh, the, their bigger portion of calories at night. So maybe a more correct way of saying that would be uh, we eat the majority of calories and energy nutrients at night. So are you saying the philosophy that breakfast is the most important meal of the day is not true? It's 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 not true to me. To me, meal uh, frequency. There's a lot of studies now that look at meal frequency and food distribution, and and we used to think that it was that breakfast yeah. was the most important meal meal of the day. We all need to slave away and eat six small meals spread out, you know, every two hours. And of course, no one can actually do that in the real world, other than a very small percentage of fitness athletes and bodybuilders. Um, but the new research that's coming out is basically saying, look, if you control for uh, food choices, which we talked about, if you have um, the right calories and macronutrients, meal frequency is pretty much irrelevant in terms of fat loss and the metabolic you know, factors related yeah. to fat loss. So basically what that's just saying, that's some geek speak there, but basically what it just is saying is that um, if you're eating the right foods, meal frequency should be whatever is the most sustainable and functional for you. So most people can't eat six meals. Most people want to eat big at night. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I've set up some structures where it's, hey, maybe it's three meals a day. Maybe it's breakfast, lunch with some lighter, lower carb foods, and then a big starch loaded dinner. Some people even do, uh, uh, there's a bell curve, right? So some people can, very few can do that six small meals a day. Most people can do that three meals a day, base their diet off that. And then there's even some now in the fitness industry, there's a, there's an approach called intermittent fasting which is really popular, which is even less meals. It's, it's basically- I've tried it. Yeah, so it's basically, they skip breakfast because um, when, you, when you wake up, your body's in that fat burning mode and to eat food actually sort of inhibits that. So there's some people who will even skip breakfast and just eat lunch and dinner uh, and they get great results. I'm one of those people now that I basically just eat two meals a day. I, I wanna come back to that. Before sure. we go too deep into intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. what, are the macronutrient profiles someone should be eating? How many calories should someone? Sure. How many calories should someone who doesn't exercise eat? The average person. How much should someone who's working out be eating? Sure, sure. And, and again, like so, so obviously you're right. It's very much adjusted to what you're doing and, and your body type. But uh, there's some very complex formulas out there. But to me, do you have a simple one. I do have a simple one. <laughs> and what is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm all about simplification, right? So there's too much information overload in our industry yes. and people end up analyzing and analyzing and never doing anything so we want to simplify this so um, the basic formulas that I use are if your goal is to lose fat it's about 10 to 12 calories per pound um, okay if you're if you're if you're trying to just maintain your weight or what's called recomposition where you're you're gaining muscle losing fat but you're but your overall weight's not changing that is roughly 13 to 15 calories per pound and then if your goal is to gain muscle, it's 16 calories per pound or above. Now, this simplifies it, but it's, but it's, but it's not the end. All, all anyone can do is give you a good starting point, and the person has to go out there and then apply it and test and assess. Some people would need more. Some would be less. Than the average metabolism. calories. Yeah, so, so individual metabolic rate, individual hormonal profile is so unique that 
you, you can't really nail down an exact specific number. People need to go out, they need to test, they need to assess, and then they just say, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not losing fat, so I need, maybe I'm one of those who needs a little less calories, a little less carbs. So, so the one question I have, okay, so let's say I'm trying to lean down, I'm mm -hmm. going on a light diet of 10 calories per body pound, which mm -hmm. means I'm gonna be hungry. Sure. But now, what if I go burn 500 calories on an exercise? Do right. I subtract, do I add that on top? Am I allowed to eat 500 more, or do I come well, in with that big of a deficit? Yeah, well, right. How do and you balance these, that? Sure, What's, sure. What do you and, and these are, uh, I don't, uh, with what I do, and most people are coming to me for physique results, I don't place a high emphasis on cardiovascular activity as a means to drop body fat. What I do is I, I think the most uh, efficient way is to use your diet for 80, 90% of your fat loss. So these are set up basically basically with the mind of, hey, I'm strength training yeah. three to four times a week, maybe five at the most, not doing a ton of cardio on top of that. Cardio is, is, uh, is great for certain things, but in terms of pure cosmetic uh, enhancement, it's not as important as everyone it's thinks. Weights. It's weights. It's, it's free weights that shape the body. It's, it's really diet that causes the majority of your fat loss. Exercise is great at preserving muscle, boosting the metabolic yeah. rate, shaping your body. Uh, there's a lot of studies actually show that exercise is not really that effective for fat loss at all without dietary intervention. There's, there's probably, uh, in, in one of the books I wrote, I think yeah. I put like 20 studies where it's like exercise is relatively ineffective for fat loss. Exercise is great yeah. at preserving muscle. So then your goal when you exercise should be to build Build or maintain muscle. muscle. It should never be, at least in my to burn opinion, fat. to burn fat. Right. That, so this that is, is very that interesting. Make, that right? is a, a big difference. Now, I just thought of this, but so sure. you get people doing CrossFit and these ultra high intense mm -hmm. exercise routines, but then a lot of them promote paleo. Mm -hmm. But from what I understand, if you're really hitting hitting your workouts that hard, you probably want to be taking in more starchy carbs than most of the paleo diets. Is that Absolutely. A, a modification you'd make? Absolutely. Uh, uh, CrossFit or cross training is one of the highest uh, intensity, most anaerobic activities there right. is. And coupling it with a low carb diet is, burn muscle. is one of the worst things you can do. And you see this a lot. You see a lot of these guys who are performing all kinds of like crazy pull up and, and Olympic yes. lift drills and they're, and they're amazing at, at the tasks they can complete. But a lot of them don't look that great. No, I, I'm well, astonished with how, right? how intense these people train. And also, I've seen some people that, and they they can outperform me in so many different ways. But then you look at them, and you wouldn't even guess they work out. So what's going on there? Right, because the diet is not aligned uh, with their training protocol. They're doing super high intensity anaerobic activity, yet they're it's it's very catabolic. Yet they're not offsetting that with an anabolic recovery period that yeah. includes nutrition and carbohydrates are very anabolic. They refill those muscle glycogen reserves. Uh, they shuttle amino acids into the muscle cells. So their, their, their program is not aligned with their diet, and so it's one of the worst mismatches. That absolutely, it's, just as, it's just as bad as, say, the mismatch of the sedentary person eating a very high-carbohydrate diet. Which is an absolute no. Right, which is, you know, modern America, right? So, so that's a mismatch of Big diet time. and Big time training mismatch. protocol. No training, very high carbohydrates. A lot of those are sugary, too. Right. The other way is it's, it's the reverse of that. Yeah. It's very high-intensity anaerobic training with no carbohydrate diets, it's a mismatch. And so you see that, you see a lot of muscle loss, you see a lot of skinny fat. I get a lot of emails that's like, hey Nate, I'm doing, these, I'm doing this you know, CrossFit, high intensity anaerobic training with this low carb diet. I have no testosterone, no sex drive. Um, so what they're doing is they're destroying their metabolism. So they need to eat home. more carbs. They need to eat more carbs. They now, need speaking of uh, questions, we actually have some questions from some of our viewers. So oh, I wanted to cool. get your take on this. First one is, what are two of the dietary principles I should follow? I'm a skinny guy trying to gain muscle in a sustainable and st sh safe short-term and long-term way. Yeah, well, uh, I'm a skinny guy who's always <laughs> trying to gain muscle. So. I've been there myself. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I followed it the wrong way. I've, I've one of those who'd follow those magazines and say, hey, eat everything in sight, bulk up, yes. doesn't matter, just bulk eat whatever you can. And I got bigger, but I also got a lot fatter, and I was unhealthy and, and, and all those things. I didn't feel good, all that type of stuff. Um, so I would say no matter what, whether your goal is fat loss, whether your goal is muscle gain, food choices are always number one because beyond anything cosmetic, that's what's going to optimize your, your health. I so, think you already keyed in on it. It's basically up the calories to, was it 
17 per body pound? Yeah, so you would start range? at maybe maybe 16 uh, and then assess them there. Some people need to go as high as 20. Like someone like me, yeah. I need to eat something like 20 calories per pound to gain, gain, gain muscle just because I'm leaner and, and that's my and metabolism. And you work out a lot. And I work out a lot. Um, but yeah, so food choices to me always don't go on one of these like, hey, I'm going to eat pizza and ice cream and that's how I'm going to bulk up. It's not healthy. Um, and over the, cosmetically, over the long term, it reduces insulin sensitivity. So you're actually not you're actually going to be gaining more fat than muscle, that type of yeah. stuff. Um, but then, too, you have to be just as diligent to gain muscle as you do to drop fat. People, f people for some reason, think that... Would you that crank up the protein on those? You, you, could, you, can, you, can, uh, you, can, you can eat a little more protein, but uh, to me, it's more about consistency. That's where I see people fail when they're trying to gain muscle, is consistency, because they think, hey, dieting is really hard. I've got to be consistent. 12 weeks, I'm going to get ripped. Yeah. So they're very disciplined. They're very consistent. Now all the time, now all of a sudden they go to bulk up and gain muscle. They're like, well, I can, I can eat, I can this. do whatever I want. Yeah, I can cheat. So they start I can, to get loose. They start to get loose and they start to uh, not be as disciplined as consistent. So trust me, uh, for someone with a certain metabolism, gaining muscle is just as hard, if not harder, than dropping fat. So you have to be beyond anything diet-wise. You have to be just as consistent and diligent and disciplined as the person trying to lose weight. So be very consistent. All right. The next yeah. question is: We're all humans. <laughs> So we, we are? may want <laughs> <laughs> we may want to we might want to treat right. when when we're trying to eat right. But what are some cheat foods that we can eat? And I'm also curious. In addition, do you eat desserts? And what are some desserts? Well, and cheat well, here's foods you the thing: recommend? is I uh, I actually uh, uh, I recommend uh, cheat meals. Um, there's some physiological yeah. reasons for that, but mostly the reason I recommend them is psychology-wise. Is that um, that's the problem is people, people get gung-ho about their diet and they're like, okay, I'm giving up pizza and ice cream forever. And, you know, that doesn't work for that long. It's not sustainable, right? What happens is they're good for a week or two and then they're like, well, this isn't going to last. So then yes. they've been on. So I actually put those cheat meals in. I'm like, look, it, it makes it much. You plan it out You plan of time. it out because what it does is it helps people actually stick to a diet plan because they're like, look, you know, Wednesday night comes around. I really want pizza, but. You know, my, I schedule my cheat meal for Saturday because yes. when I socialize with my friends, that's what I want to do. It makes it much more likely that they stick to their diet and say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to have pizza tonight. I'll eat my, you know, nice, healthy, whole food, caveman meal. And then I'll go and eat out and eat pizza with my friends on a Saturday night. So I schedule those. So when I do that, I'm like, hey, no limits. So whatever you want, whatever you've been craving, I'd rather have you do that once a week than eat little... Um, I don't know how to politely say it, but... Uh, <laughs> go uh, ahead and say uh, it. Bull crap health industry foods that are supposed to be better for you than, right. uh, you know, what I'm talking about is like organic, uh, gluten-free cookies. Oreos. Right? Yes. So people think they're doing something healthy that for themselves by eating organic cookies. They're not. Be good all week, eat whole foods, and then go out and eat whatever cookies you want on Saturday. Are there some cheap foods that you enjoy and would eat on a non-cheat meal? I mean, would you have dark chocolate with nuts, dark chocolate with raisins? What? Sure. Anything mm -hmm. more. Yeah. I mean, anything more, more the, the natural, the better. Right, so obviously, like dark chocolate and almonds would be much better than a donut or something mm -hmm. like that. But uh, again, that comes back to I, I am more of the of the uh, uh, a school of don't don't cheat on something every day. Save it up and save and, your and dessert Have a, as have a, a treat. real meal. Like you should you should come hang out with me on a Saturday night. Which and goes see back what I eat. which goes <laughs> back to the to the traditional philosophies of having a, a cheat a cheat meal. Basically, right. they had holidays and. That's when you had your big desserts, right? That's right. That's when you feast. Um, so, um, and, and actually, what I, what I found, too, is when I switched more to the, the style of eating that I've set up, yeah. which is like your biggest meal and most of your calories and carbohydrates at night, the need to cheat is much less because people aren't trying to starve themselves at night now, right? This is when, when instinctually, this is when we want to eat when big, you're having your right? Big meal. It's the feast. Yes. It's, it's we've worked hard all day. We've hunted all day. We want to eat a big meal at night. When you follow traditional fitness nutrition, You've already eaten most of your calories. You're going right. home trying to starve yourself and eat lettuce leaves at night. That's when you're going to crave that's, ice that's cream true. and all these things because you're, you're going against your body's natural instincts. You eat a big, complete, satiating dinner. Yes. Like for me, you know, Tell I me, had... What are you gonna, what's your normal dinner? Sure. So I'm, I'm obviously quick. very, uh, very active. Um, I'm eating a relatively high carbohydrate diet now. So, you know, I might go home and eat between 1,500 and 2,000 calories for dinner. Ooh. I might have, you know, 12 ounces of a, of a you know, piece of steak, yeah. you know, with, with, you know, four or five cups of rice, big plate of vegetables, that Four or five of cups of rice, but you have to remember, lot. I haven't eaten that much during the day. I've eaten lighter during the day. Got right? it. My energy reserves are depleted. 
I'm sucking up those nutrients and I'm using them for, for a specific purpose. Right, so purpose, you don't recommend right? normal person does this, but you do recommend right. the normal person has a big dinner. I, I do, re regardless. If you're not exercising much more paleo, if you exercise a lot, get some starches and carbs you and got say it. your body does. You got it, but regardless. I, I've got another uh, oh, question sir, we've sure. got to hit here. Yeah. I work full time and I'm a single mother and I want to lose weight. What are some foods that are quick and easy to prepare that you can suggest? That's the beauty of this diet. So a lot of these foods are, are raw foods. You don't need to prepare anything. You're eating some whole fruit, you're eating some nuts, you're eating some vegetables, right? No prep time at all. What I do recommend is some time-saving tips. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're gonna never cook for just one, so if you're gonna cook, you know, a steak or some chicken yeah. or some fish, you know, cook a bunch of it so you have leftovers for the next couple of days. That's a time saver right there. Another suggestion, hey, things always get crazy. You do have to eat out sometimes. You're not going to be able to cook all your meals. You know, s scout out in your area some, some restaurants that offer some, mm -hmm. some healthier options. If you're, if you're sedentary and you are doing more of the caveman theme, find some that offer those options, which are most places. You know, if you're doing more of the athlete's plan and, you're, and you need some places that have some good starch, find some, you know, Japanese restaurants, uh, Vietnamese restaurants. I'm half Asian. Give but, us a real yeah, quick sure. meal that someone can prepare prepare and we're getting close to the time cue there sure sure yeah so you would just uh you know you can bake some fish uh you got you got any can number of tuna if you're in a big hurry well yeah but <laughs> that's a little <laughs> hardcore fitness right so um let's say let's say any meat you can you can bake at 20 minutes boom done uh, it, uh you got you got vegetables that you've you've stir fried that takes 10 minutes right steam steamed it's easy quick. you can turn it on and leave you can turn on the oven and leave um, if you're, if you, if that's it, you know, maybe, uh, maybe some avocado or some nuts. If you're on the caveman style, if you're on the more, uh, athletes carb based plan, you can, you can get a rice cooker. Yeah. It cooks very quick, half an hour. All these things are, all these things are easy to do. You just have to commit to do well, it. Well, I did get our time cue, so we're just about out of time, but I wanted to thank you for coming yeah. on our show. And again, fascinating, hitting the big meal at the end of the day. Mostly paleo, but if you're exercising a lot, go ahead, have some starches, That's some correct. yams, some rice. Go out there, train hard, and if you want to gain weight, be as meticulous with your diet as if you want to lose weight. Consistency on both ends. Plan and schedule your cheat meals. Great advice. I really enjoyed your book, and I'm glad that, to have you on this show. Thanks for having me. It's been a lot me. of fun, and Hope I'm actually enjoyed. hungry. I'm going to go get some meat and some food <laughs> here in a minute. There you go. Yeah, thanks for the tips. It's good yeah. advice. Thanks for Let's having me. Let's do a me. quick high five. All right. Cool. <laughs>